Stephen Bird, uh, I'm head of research product for the Americas and head of sustainability research. Thrilled to be here. Thank you all for being here with us. We have an excellent panel. Um, I want to start this, it sounds very high level, but I think we're going to quickly get into some real details. But the idea of the energy transition is one that uh, raises a lot of questions. I think there's a lot of confusion around what we mean when we say energy transition. So for each of you all, I wonder if you could just start by what does it mean for you? Where do you focus within the transition? How do you define that overall? Maybe, Lisa, if you want to Great. Start. Thanks, Stephen. So uh, we believe that it's important to have a holistic approach to the energy transition. So we believe that it's important that every, um, you know, whether you're a data center in Texas or uh, a small business in Africa, having access to energy is key. And, you know, so we, we also look at... I'm sorry, I'm just kind of losing my That's train fine. of thought here a little bit. Um, and you've yeah, been so involved in transition for a long time, right? Companies that are improving their financial have, results yeah. while they're... Yes, yeah, so we believe, we believe energy is just essential to our daily lives as technology. You yeah. know, so, that, so of course, it's not just about energy security, it's also about how do we get from high carbon to low carbon or zero carbon energy. And we know that path is not a straight one. It's going to happen over a period of time, and we believe that fossil fuels will continue to be a part of the energy mix for some time to come. But, you know, where possible, lowering CO2 emissions um, is a path that we believe we need to be on. Uh, one of the sort of underappreciated areas of the energy transition is this area of how technology can help reduce energy use and enhance energy efficiency. Uh, so we believe this is a sort of undervalued and underappreciated part of the energy transition, and we see AI as having a really key role in this area. That's a good point. I mean, energy efficiency and less usage is often the cheapest form. It doesn't get a lot of attention, so that's a, that's a good observation. Maybe, Greg, if next, how do you think about the transition? Yeah, um, energy transition is a key part of what we focus on. It, it is just one of our end sectors because we focus more broadly on climate change overall. But, um, you know, when I think of energy transition generally, it's, it's obviously the evolution of where we get our energy sources over time. And I think there have been quite substantial changes to date and, and a lot more coming. You know, I think, um, you know, years ago when people first started talking about energy, energy transition, it was largely about transitioning the energy grid and, and yeah. you know, where we get our other energy sources exactly. to being more green, you know, get to net zero and soft climate change and all that stuff. And so we've kind of, you know, largely moved off coal. You know, there's a lot more gas now. You see a lot of renewables coming on the grid. And so that shift from you know, a bit more traditional energy to a bit more renewable energy is kind of the first phase in a lot of ways. Um, but there's also an ongoing, and you know, that will obviously continue um, you know, over the next couple decades. But there's, there's a bit of an ongoing transition that's happening as well, where our energy supply just has to react to geopolitical events, yeah. has to react to energy, uh, to, to technology transformations. And so, you know, there's been, um, you know, war that's changed how Europe thinks about their energy grid. We've had, re uh, you know, electric cars start taking over, you know, oil and gas demand. And so that's a big shift. You know, obviously we'll talk about data centers and what's happening there. So that's a big shift. And so to, to me, energy transition is just really wrapping all of those trends into one. But there, there's a lot of underlying pieces to it. Yeah, Greg, you're raising a good point. Years ago, it was all about renewable energy and just in the power space. And you're speaking to a much broader set of industries, a broader set of technologies that we're, we're, we now need to deploy. And some of those sectors are quite hard to decarbonize. We're going to get into that a little bit more. Yeah, exactly. So, Lillian, what, what would you say? Yeah, I think the way that I think about the transition is both as kind of an endpoint and a continuum. I think we all understand and agree collectively as humans the where we need to get to. Um, a fundamental reorientation of you know, the global economy away from being powered by fossil fuels to being powered by different sources. Um, and I think the way that we get there is the continuum. Uh, we've seen a lot of leaps and bounds in the renewable energy space, in um, you know, renewable power um, in certain industries, but there are a lot of different steps that we need to take to continue to move forward towards that kind of desired endpoint. Um, so there's you know, a lot of different technologies, a lot of different ways to invest you know, both in mature and in um, early stage companies to achieve that goal. Um, and I think, you know, we have to focus, to your point, Stephen, both on the kind of low-hanging fruit of energy efficiency, so reducing overall power need, um, as well as, you know, uh, finding a new way to think about how the power that we do need is, is going to be um, kind of derived. So I think it's, it's both, you know, what do we need, what is our desired endpoint, which is, I suppose, for most people, 
2015 net zero or as close to it as we can get. And then how do we get there? And I think that how we get there is a lot of different stages, a lot of different steps, which opens up an enormous breadth of opportunity uh, for investors and for allocators and for humans to kind of um, work in these different spaces, different technologies, different um, areas of the capital stack kind of like we all represent on the stage. So yeah, I think it's it's kind of a fundamental transformation um, of the world economy. Well said. Uh, Marina, what would you I'll, say? I'll just layer on at the risk of <laughs> hyperbole. We talk about the fourth industrial revolution of moving from molecules to electrons. Mm -hmm. So after 200 years of combustible technologies transforming molecules into energy, now we're switching over to electricity. I think the, the piece maybe that I can add that, that hasn't necessarily been addressed yet is that when we talk about energy transition, we mean this sort of entire um, overhaul of the entire energy system. But it's not just investing huge amounts in renewables, it's also working very closely with conventional energy companies on their decarbonization journey. And so, you know, we don't have kind of renewable companies over here and conventional companies over there. It's kind of a one holistic you know, energy system. So basically on the current, current pathway of emissions, as we said, is unsustainable for the planet. We need to go from 20% of the energy mix being renewable generation to 85. And you have some huge challenges there because we obviously have to decarbonize power generation and transport. Um, that's 54% of global emissions. Those two areas are very unsustainable currently. And then global electricity usage is obviously increasing because of population growth, overall consumption levels, AI, you know, which we'll get into. Um, so it's a huge amount of capital that's needed to decarbonize across that entire value chain. Um, and, and again, like I said, we, we think about this across both renewable and, and conventional energy companies because they, they will exist. They're just going to look really different in the future. 